In today's video, we're gonna be using Adobe Photoshop to create ourselves this rustic logo for a cafe. Now, before we get started on making this logo, we just need to quickly download a few things off the internet, so I'll just show you what they are now. First one is this font here called Kafita. It's from dafont.com. The link's in the description of the video. It is a freebie, so just load it up, click the download button, and install that font onto your computer. Um, once we've got that font, the next thing we need to get is the Coffee House Illustration Set from the Heritage Type Co. Uh, this set has these high quality illustrations here that you can use in your designs. We're going to be using this little jug down here today, uh, but you've got access to all these other ones as well in vector format or in bitmap format. Also comes with some logos and um, coffee splatters and stains and whatnot as well. So it's not a bad little pack to get. And this ripper of a pack over here is the other one you're gonna need. It's the Ultimate Logo Bundle. So it's got 200 logos in it, along with a few other bits and pieces. Uh, so you get a bit of an idea of what's inside it. Okay, the thing we're gonna be using though is this uh, grungy texture effect. So it's gonna add that rustic kind of look to our logo. All right, so once you've got those three things downloaded, they do need to be saved into your account. Should look, I guess, something like this. We've got this coffee jug, we've got the font, and we've got the grungy texture effect. Once we've got them all there, open up this grunge texture effect in Photoshop, and we can get started on creating our logo today. Okay, so this is what the grunge texture effect looks like. We don't need it just yet. We're going to come back to it. But what we're going to do in the meantime is just head up to the file menu and create a new file. Now from here, we're gonna to go to our print templates. Uh, we, do, we wanted to make this logo ready for printing. We're gonna work in pixels today. Uh, I'm gonna to just set the width and the height to 2000 pixels. If you wanna have a higher quality logo, by all means, make those numbers bigger. But I think that's reasonable quality for now. Resolution should be 300 pixels per inch. Color mode should be CMYK. And then we can click on create. And you will get a white canvas on your page. First thing we need to do is change the color of this canvas to a darker gray. So what I'm gonna do is go and select my paint bucket tool from my toolbox. And I'm gonna click on my color down here, my fill color, and I'm gonna select a dark gray. All right, we don't wanna go black. It just won't really suit it. I think a fairly dark gray will look good. And then just click once on your background to color in your background that dark gray. Now that's pretty similar to my um, workspace background there. So what I'm gonna do is just grab my move tool here and just change my um, workspace there to maybe a medium gray so you can see the difference there a bit clearer. I just right clicked and chose that. Okay, so I've got this dark gray canvas. Um, now what we're gonna do is start the logo off by drawing a rounded rectangle onto the page. Now to do that, you need to go over to your shapes here it's underneath your rectangle tool, so hold your mouse down on the rectangle tool and select the rounded rectangle. And I want you to go up the top here and turn your fill off. So choose the box with the red line going through it to turn your fill off. Your stroke color needs to be a light gray. So don't choose full on white. We want to choose something close to it, but just with a tinge of gray in it. So a light gray will look good. And once you've got that, the stroke size, oh, it's a bit of a guess for now, but let's make it say 100 pixels. Uh, probably a bit too big, but we'll see how it looks when we draw it. Okay, now to draw this rounded rectangle, I'm not gonna get you to click and drag. I just want you to click once in the middle of the canvas. Now when these boxes come up, I want you to set the width to 1,000, the height to 1,000, and then for the corner radiuses, I want you to set them to 60 pixels each. And you can check, uh, check the um, from center box as well down the bottom there to draw your uh, rounded rectangle from the center. Click OK, and you should in a moment get a rounded rectangle on the screen. Now that stroke is too thick. So that 100 pixel stroke that I put in here, we can move that down, something a bit skinnier. So I'm gonna be looking, oh, that's not too bad there. So maybe around the 45, 50 pixel mark will look good. I'll probably stick with say 50 pixels for now. I think that should be okay. Just thinking that might be still a little bit fat. How's 40 look? Actually 40 pixels might do me a bit better. So 40 pixels for the stroke. Now once you've got that sorted, go and grab your move tool from your toolbox and hover just off one of the corners and you'll see your mouse cursor changes looking like you can rotate the shape. Once you can see that mouse cursor change, hold shift 
and then click and drag in a clockwise direction. You'll start rotating your shape. Okay, from here I'm just going to hold Alt and Shift and just stretch that out a bit so it fills up most of my page. And then using my guides, I'm going to put that right in the center and click the tick. Okay, so I've now got my basic shape for this logo. Um, what I'm going to do now is put some text in. So I'm going to grab my type tool, just the horizontal type tool there. And the font we're using today, remember, is Kafita. So go and find Kafita. Uh, the size, we'll just leave it at 40, whatever it's set to for now. We can change it in a moment. The color we want, we want to use a gold kind of color. Okay, I'm going to go a bit more orange than that. It doesn't need to be too dark. We want it to contrast well with our background, so make it reasonably light. I guess something like that it doesn't look too bad. It's kind of goldy color. Just click somewhere on your page, and in capital letters, I want you to write the word, or the words, the grind. And you can use your move tool to move that down into roughly the middle of your page. Now this needs to take up a bit more room, so I'm going to uh, grab my type tool again, and I'm going to highlight this. And I'm going to play around with the settings until I get this right. So we can play with the size first of all, just to make it a bit bigger. I might bump it up to about 60. And I'm going to play with the tracking here. I'm going to make the tracking go up to about 200, and that's going to put some space between each of the letters, like so. Um, I'm just going to grab my move tool now and just move it down so it's pretty much centered with the middle of this shape. So the grind, yeah, that's not looking too bad actually. You can if you want to resize it, you don't have to use this here. You can just grab the corners, stretch it out a little bit if you want, or you can, whoops, or you can just change it a little bit by using that tool there. About size 68 is working pretty well for me, I think, there. Okay, after we've written the grind, we're going to add some more text in. This time the color is going to be white. So change the color to, actually it won't be white, it'll be that light gray kind of color. If you want, you could probably just click on this um, shape and get the same light gray. And still in capital letters, we're going to add in the words coffee shop. This time a lot smaller. So I'm going to go down about size 24 there to start with, and I'm going to stick this underneath the grind. And I'm going to space this out using my tracking. I'm going to set it to like, oh, say 500. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. If I just click off that, that looks pretty good, I think. So we've got the grind coffee shop looking pretty decent there now. Um, I'm going to then add some more text in. It's the last of the text. It's going to go down the bottom here in fairly small writing capital letters yet again whoops it's going to say new york now the color of this needs to be the same as this yellow that we used before or that goldy kind of color so just click on one of your letters there to select that same gold color and just move new york over here now i don't want this um tracking to be set quite as high for the word new york so i'm going to move this right down uh, we'll go back to about 200 maybe that will probably look good Size wise, uh, probably a little bit smaller than coffee shop, so let's bring it down to say size 18-ish, probably look good, maybe 19, it's not too bad. I'm going to zoom in a bit here now just to do some nudging around. I think this will look good if I put some lines either side of or on top and bottom of the words New York, so I'm going to use my rectangle tool to do that. Now the lines are going to be white, so I'm going to change my fill, actually I won't make them white, I might make it that light grey kind of colour we've been using. I'm going to turn the stroke off and I'm just going to draw a skinny little rectangle like so, that's about the same width as New York. Zooming in on that, let's have a closer look. You can click on it with your move tool and while you're holding down Alt, click and drag down. and. I'm just going to put that underneath New York like so. Now New York needs to be smack bang in the middle of that. Your guides should help you out pretty much to get that right in the center. Let's zoom back and have a look and see how that's going. Those lines are probably a bit thick for my liking, so I might just whoops, redo that and just make it a bit skinnier. 
using my move tool here you should be able to just resize it yeah it's a bit nicer so I'll hold alt I'll have to zoom in a bit here and try to duplicate this there we go that looks a bit nicer so zooming back now yeah that looks pretty good all right so we've got the grind coffee shop in new york up the top now we want to put in a picture so the picture we're using if we just jump back over here was this little jug i'm just going to drag it from my account and i'm going to drop it in now it's fairly high quality so it's pretty big so i'm going to resize it first of all before giving it a color uh, now it's going to be filling up a fair chunk of this space probably about there would look good and we want to color it that light gray kind of color so what we do it's called asset 16 over here in your layers if you double click in this empty space just to the right of asset 16 you'll get your layer style box appearing and we want to put a color overlay onto this the color we want is this gray so just click on this gray color click OK click OK all right so we've now got our little coffee jug up the top there and the last little effect I want to put in is a bit of a rectangle that runs um, either side of this coffee jug so let's zoom in here and we'll grab our rectangle tool again we're going to use the same fill color as we've got just here and we're going to click and drag pretty much straight through the middle of this jug and it's going to go outside the lines like so it's going to look a bit ugly actually to start with I need this down a bit Probably around there will look all right okay that looks pretty good so what I want to do now if I just stretch this out you'll see what I'm doing a bit clearer I want to cut off the ends of this line anything that's overlapping um, that outer diamond shape I want to chop off so what I'm going to do I know this layer down the bottom here this rectangle layer oops it's not it the rounded rectangle layer sorry in my layers box that's my diamond shape so this layer here if you hold control and click on this square here it's going to select it and you can see the marching ants or that bounding box appear around the diamond okay what I'm going to do now while those marching ants are there is go back up and select this rectangle that I just drew in so we're on the rectangle layer that I just drew in this skinny little rectangle here if I go to select and choose inverse it's going to select everything outside of this diamond shape on that skinny rectangle layer I know that sounds confusing but basically what we're selecting here is these little bits here and here now to cut them off all we need to do is right click on this layer and rasterize the layer first and then press delete and you'll see that it just removes those little bits hanging over the edge of the diamond shape okay to get rid of these marching ants just go to select and then deselect or press ctrl D okay and that's looking good for now what I want to do next is just cut away this bit that's over the top of the coffee jug okay so to do that I'm just going to use my rectangular marquee tool second tool down there in your toolbox I'm going to simply draw a rectangle marquee over the bits I want to cut away so maybe about there to start with we'll see if that looks any good I'm going to click back on my rectangle 2 layer and just press delete and it just deletes that part inside the marquee marquee pressing control D that will delete oh, sorry it will just um, remove those little marching ants that's not looking too bad it seems to be a little bit off center I could probably get rid of a little bit more over here if you wanted to be fussy you could um, really take the time to get this perfect but I'm just doing a rush job at the moment um, probably took off a little bit too much I'll just take a tiny bit something like that doesn't look too bad and you can nudge these around until you get them perfect but I think that looks pretty good for now and that's going to achieve the effect I want if you wanted to actually probably make this just a wee bit bigger looking at that there you go that looks pretty nice so we've got a pretty good looking logo but what we want to do now is whack that um, grungy texture effect on top of it to give it that rustic kind of look so what we're going to do is we're going to go over to our other tab that we've got open this grunge texture effect um, file that we opened up at the start of the tutorial 
And there's just one particular layer that we're going to use. So looking at our layers over here on the right hand side, you can hit the little eyeball next to your design here. We don't need that. And if you want, you can probably hide the back. No, I should leave the background texture up. We'll just open up the grunge effect folder here. This texture is the one we want. All right, if I hide that design, you can see this is the kind of texture effect we want to whack on top. Let me just delete it for a sec of our logo. You can see the effect it makes on this example. So we want that kind of look on our logo. All right, so what I want you to do is click on this texture layer and go up to edit and copy. Then go back to our logo here and go to edit and paste. And it will paste in a texture over here. And you can see you now got this gritty kind of look across the top of your logo. Looks pretty good. Um, you have the option, if you zoom back a bit, to resize this. You can make it bigger or smaller. It's up to you. I'm going to make it a bit bigger, actually. Uh, so something like that. And I'll press the tick when I'm done. If you zoom in, you can still see that gritty effect on our logo. I do think it's a little bit too strong, a little bit too dark at the moment. So there's a few ways to adjust that. One of the ways is to use the blend mode here and play around with different blend modes. So you can go through from normal, dissolve, and you can go through and see if there's one there that uh, suits the look you're going for. I don't think too many of these look too flash. That pin light's not too bad. Depends if you want to have the background with the effect on it as well. Uh, luminosity isn't too bad either. It's up to you. I'm just going to probably leave it on normal for now. And I'm going to change the opacity. That's how transparent this effect is. So while the texture layer is selected, play with your opacity. By dropping it down, it's not going to be as harsh. So if you go all the way down to like 5 or 10% or something, you're barely going to notice the effect. It still looks like a pretty clean logo. As you turn the opacity up though, you'll start to see that grungy effect come into play. Okay, so it will start to look a little bit more prominent. So I'm going to go up oh, probably around the 70% mark, I'd say. I do want it to stand out quite a bit. And zooming in, you can see that rustic kind of look now across the top of my logo. doesn't look too bad. Okay. Um, let me just try some of these again. Some of them did look all right. Uh, it's up to you. If you want to throw in a different blend mode, by all means go for it. I think to keep life easy, I'll leave it off for now. Okay, so zooming back out, what I'm going to do to finish off is just grab my crop tool. That's just going to crop around the square there and cut off any of that excess texture we don't need. So press enter. And then press enter again. And that will crop it to size. So pressing control zero will zoom in. And there we have it. We have our rustic looking logo for a coffee shop.